Alrighty. I am doing a first impressions look at a game, Galactic Scoundrels. So let's take a quick look at that. Alrighty here, this is Galactic Scoundrels. Alright, so, this is a new tabletop game that is going to be starting a Kickstarter on June 25th. First impressions. I haven't looked at the game aside from when I saw it. Uh, I saw it online. I saw tweets about it, and it at first glance kind of gave me a like Firefly esque feel. So that's what caught my eye. Not gonna lie, um, the art actually caught my eye. I I, I love packaging. I know that sounds weird, like packaging, book covers, things like that. It, I mean, the art always gets me. Art is is a very important thing, you know, for somebody you know like me that that likes to draw and play games and all you know kinds of things like that. So this is I haven't looked at it, I haven't opened it up or anything like that. Um, yeah. So this is Galactic Scoundrels. It's a game of space western mayhem for three to five players. Oh, let's see here. It says up in the back, people rarely get what they want, friend. Maybe you wanted to be a rock star or a famous actress or a rancher. On a quiet backwater moon, doesn't matter. Fact is, you become a two-bit pilot instead. For many years that you care to count, you've traveled the seedy underbelly of the galaxy, looking for quick jobs with quicker paydays. You are smart enough, you've just never had the patience to work the long con. I get it. Keep things low risk, leaves plenty of time for drinking and gambling, plus the comforts of all those pretty strangers you meet along the way. You know what, spaceman, all that'd be just fine if it were enough. Only I get the feeling there's an itch of a dream that's been growing on you, and it's getting harder not to scratch. You know the one I mean. One perfect job, a huge jackpot. And then you have to retire somewhere nice. Well, good news, friend. This is your chance. Galactic Scoundrels is um, published by Little Rock Games. The website is playgalacticscoundrels.com, which we'll be taking a look at a little bit later. Alright, so let's open this up. First impressions, first look. Alright, so you have your rule book. Here we go. So it's, you know, typical, typical rule book, look, fashion. Artwork is the same as on the cover, which I'm okay with. I love the art. Let's see here. One second. All right. So, based on what I see so far, I mean, it sounds it sounds interesting. It sounds, you know, I said it, it caught my eye because I'm a you know Firefly fan. So that's. That's what you know made me stop and look and and see. Hey, what what is this? What what's this about? Um, that looks like my things I messed up. One second, sorry about that.
All right. Yeah, this is this this throw me a little off. I had to change all my all my camera setup for for this. All right. So we have the rule book. We have order of a round, winning hand, trades, resolving twists. So two of these. I guess it looks as if it's kind of a let's see here. Kind of like a cheat sheet, I guess. Where it tells you what wins. One pair, two pair, three of a kind. Hmm. So this seems like there's some sort of poker twist to this and sort of resolving twists. You can help or you can harm. So let's take a look at that. You can help or you can harm. And then the back side of this you have winning hand order around treats. So We'll go over that a little bit more in just a minute. Again, there's two of those. Alright, let's see what else is in here. Alright, you have a couple of dies here. It's been a long time since I've had, I've had a game night, so I'm kind of excited to play this. I will be uh, showing this off again after I play test. Again, I just got this. This is complete first first look, first review. So you have four four dice that come in here, right? Yeah, that's it. So, all right. What else is in here? All right, you have. I'm assuming. Oh, honestly, I don't know the main deck and then jobs. All right, we'll go through this. We'll go through these. So this is. Again, the same art that's on the cover of the box, the same art that's on the cover of the rule book, which looks pretty cool and nifty to me. Alright, so let's see here. Gang of thugs, so encounter. So you have encounters. Let's go through this. Alright, so let's move this over. with this focus again this camera does not want to focus today right, so counters now I could have had this all separated beforehand but I wanted to basically see this all for the first time at the same time that you all do so ah dropping things dropping things one second Here we go. Now we have fancy moves. Ooh. Let me separate these out real quick. Alright, so separating these out. Say encounter. I have no idea what any of these mean yet. Character. Twists. Traits. Oh, more encounters. Maybe I should keep them separated as is, or. I mean, am I gonna. Should I shuffle? I don't know. I don't wanna. I don't wanna mess anything up yet. All right. All right. So, some more traits. All right. Put 
paradise back in here for a minute. Alright. More twists. I mean, I really want to pile them together. But at the same time, I'm like... Maybe I shouldn't? Or they're just... Let's see here. Ah, okay. Quite possibly. So, as it's being pointed out to me, they're, while they're same twist, twist, little icons here on the corner are different. So we're going to keep them separated then, just because I don't know yet what's going on. Alright, we have some more encounters here. However, this symbol, similar, same symbol as this one, so now... I'm not sh quite sure, but we'll get into that once once I get into the rule book. So could be there, just all put in there like that. So all right, basically just more more of the same traits, just twists, more traits, more character. So. We'll see what this all means. We'll see what this all means in a sec. So I'm just gonna basically grab them all in somewhat order that they were in. Somewhat, not perfect. I really can't wait to, to play test this. Alright, so this is pretty big pretty big deck. Like All right. We have another stack in here. All right, we got jobs. Jobs. We got ships. Obviously, we need a crew. Definitely need some cargo. Oh, we have we have episodes. Episode four. They all say episode four. Yeah. Episode four. Episode five. So these are these are episode cards. Episode six. I only see three three different episodes. Episode five. Four, five, six. What what happened? One, two, three. I see episodes four, five, six. No one, two, three. So I'm not I'm not sure how that works yet. All right, crew. Unless I skipped jobs or episodes somewhere else. No. No. Huh. All right. So let's look at the rule book. All right. Okay, the story. Basically what I read earlier in the back of the in the back of the box. Objective, you have one goal in Galactic Scoundrels to become the richest swindler in the galaxy while telling a beauty of a story along the way. So in other words, mm, make things up. You make money by surviving dangerous jobs to get paid and by f fleecing by fleecing other players when they're in trouble. Uh, it's time to put your lion chit in no good dirty dealing game face, amigo. You're gonna need it. Play it meek on this end of the galaxy and you won't last long. Alright. Telling stories. Each round of Galactic Scoundrels involves one player taking a job fit for a scoundrel. Whether it's assassination, a kidnapping, or just old-fashioned smuggling run. Everyone plays. Everyone playing tells the tale of the job one event at a time. 
Every action taken, every roll of the dice, every card plate advances the story, complicating the adventure of the scoundrel who's trying to make it to payday. So this is going to be hard for people that can't think of things on the fly, of what to say, I think. So, um, let me see here. Here, uh, da, da, da. adventures can be seriously or silly, tame and wild, absurd or plausible. So this is this is gonna be fun. This is this is gonna definitely be fun. All right, so we have. Let's get to the contents. Fifteen crew cards, sixteen ship cards, eighteen cargo cards, twenty-eight job cards. Seventeen episode four payoff cards, fourteen episode five payoff cards, thirteen episode six payoff cards. Why it starts at episode four, I don't know. Um, I'll look into that for for next next stream. Um, a hundred and twelve galactic scoundrel cards with forty being trait, twenty eight being encounters, twenty eight being character, and sixteen being twist. Four space dice, specially designed for cheating in space. Isn't that super? Two reference cards showing game information and card examples. One rule book. Alright. Let's see here. Let's get into setup such and such. Find all of the two thousand credit ship cards, shuffle them and deal one. This is always, that's a lot of shuffling and, and moving around. Um so I, I like that it shows you how to place basically to place it up because that's one thing I uh, frequently had had game game nights with friends things like that and everybody would be like well where should we put this how did this go yada yada Alright, playing the game, Galactic Scoundrels is played in a series of rounds, and each round the player gamble to win. Players gamble to win a job. One player takes that job, and the other player cards. Uh, the other players play cards to make the job as difficult as possible. Oh, oh, oh! This is gonna be so much fun. Oh, especially with people that I play with. So, whoever. So this is kind of. Kind of either. It's gonna be you. Or are you gonna try to screw everybody else around? You know, over, which is super for me. Um, similar to one of my other games that I play, that I is my favorite game I think of all time, because of that concept. Honestly, because it's it's you're you're trying to win the game, and if you can't win, you're gonna make sure they can't win either, or do everything you can to either get a cut, or you know, or they don't get nothing. So this seems like it's going to be around uh, along that line as well. Um, let's see here. Yeah, if if I if I don't get the job, if I can't get the job, I am sure going to make it as difficult as I can for whoever I'm playing with not to win. That's that's just you know that's how that's my that's that's I'm very competitive. Um, the job consists of a series of of events described on the cards. Which the player on the job must resolve with her sh ship, its contents, the cards in hand, and whatever in her stash. Oh, so are we all? Are we all? Uh, all girls? That's that's pretty. That's a nice take. Usually we're. In gaming, it's really. Huh. I like that. Not bad. It's a nice little little twist there. I wasn't expecting. All right. Uh, the cards played during a job include encounter character, twist, and traits, which are all shown below, which we kind of looked at really quickly. You will draw a mixture of these throughout the game. Encounters and characters are played to challenge the player on the job, while traits are played by the job taker to respond to those challenges. Okay. Your ship, your crew, your passengers, your cargo, and even your stash can help you survive and complete a job. 
However, none of these things can help you if someone plays a twist card. The next section explains each of these mechanics in detail. Alright, so we're going to look at that. Uh, of course, you have to go the order of round. As if we're new to this, we're going to skip to that. So let, let's skip to that first. Let's see here. The order of round. Here we go. So this is going to be fun. Generally, I wait for somebody else to read all the rules <laughs> and then just tell me what to do. But this time, I'm reading the rules. So when I do my play test, I'll I'll be the one to be like, this is what's going to happen. All right, order of round. All the mechanics described described above: playing twist cards, carrying passengers, dumping cargo, etc. Happen while one player is on a job. All right. However, that's actually the last phase of a round of play. Here are all the phases of a round in order. All right. So let's go through let's go through these let's go through these orders. One, the spaceport. The start of the game. Skip the spaceport and begin with two a job opportunity. So the first part is to skip the first part. Is that the start of the game? Skip the spaceport and begin with two a job. I don't understand how s how you skip the first part. All right, let's skip the first part. Go to two job opportunity. Well, no, I'm just gonna read this. Visiting a spaceport is a chance for players to prepare for the next job, beginning with the person to the left of the one who finished the last job. So this is, I guess, the beginning once you've done a first round. That's what it sounds like. If you were not on a job last round, here we go, it means you, fi it means you find time to scavenge a bit. If you have fewer than five cards in your hand, draw until you have five cards. Alright, we're gonna have to get back to that. Alright. A job opportunity. Hire crew. A ship. Okay, it's a little confusing me right now, but again, this is all first look. I haven't looked at it myself, you know, I didn't look at it myself beforehand. I wanted it all to be first, you know, first impression. So let's let's go back to setup. Um, looks like you shuffle all the credit sh the two thousand credit ship cards. So these are the ship cards. You have let's look at the different ships. Are these all? So there is no. Really. That's pretty cool. So there is there they're all completely unique ships in this deck. Alright. So you have uh, and again this camera does not want to autofocus. You have the wild mare. Well, I'm not gonna. I don't know. I don't want to spoil people, actually. So, all right, we have the wild mare, the wanderer, the Bella Astra. I'm gonna look right now, make sure what's my favorite card. So when I do my play test, I snatch it before somebody else does. Okay, so each each ship not only is separate but it looks like there's limits so for example the wild mare crew zero past one cargo zero I don't, I don't know how you can have no crew the wanderer the same thing bill astra crew one past one cargo two pearl the pearl de devere the pale rider the sunrise the arc the Firebrand, the Calamity, the Lucky Rabbit, the Rose, 
the violet, the lily, the Mary Jane, not even going to touch that, the Alice Lay, the saffron petaline, petal, petaline, yeah, alright, so I love that every ship is unique, so, You have 16 different ships. 16 different ships that you can choose from. Oh, I thought I turned those off. I thought I turned those off for this <laughs> for this video. But let's see here. All right. So, so far it's it's looking good. Alright, so, now we have the episode cards. The episode cards seem to be monetary, monetary cards. There's, there's, there's money, there's money on them. Alright. Gambling, so you can gamble. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in this, in this game. All right, let's look at the different cards because then that might that might help make sense a little bit more of what's going on. Ships. All right, everyone starts the game with a basic ship. As you gain money, you can buy better ships from the ship deck. Any ship you own that you're not using goes in your stash, which means it can be sold, traded to other players, or lost when gambling. So be like, yeah, yeah, I don't have any money, but I'll put my ship up as collateral. So you you can do something like that can only switch to a new ship when you buy or are given one. Start a new job or take your turn while on your job. So that means you can't switch your ship mid mid round, mid game. Ships have three resource slots. Okay, so that is what that is what, what these are up top. This camera is really, really getting on my nerves. So you have Right there, crew, past, cargo. Alright. Crew, past, cargo. Let's see here. Crew passengers, abbreviated pass on the cards and cargo. Each ship is labeled with each number of available slots. It has uh, which holds one resource each. Each of these resources is explained in detail in its own section. Alright, so let's look at crew. Which is one of these cards. Depressed protocol bot. So this is the kind of crew that you will have on your on your ship. Let's take a look at these. You have a paranoid gunner. Oh, that's great. That's super paranoid trigger happy person. Okay. You have an insane genetic geneticist geneticist, I can't even can't say words. Which I mean kinda goes together usually. Suicidal pilot. Mm. Impis impossibility attractive impossibly attractive cook. So we know you know we know who's getting hit on all the time. A guilt ridden preacher. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. And those of you that would get that reference probably know know why that is hilarious to me. An obsessive compulsive mechanic. Mm, yeah, it's about just about. A manic hacker. Traveling circus performer. That would be that'd make an interesting interesting passenger crew person. Chatty assassin bot. Kleptomaniac engineer, narcoleptic doctor, type 6 android, pleasure model. Uh huh. What's the age on this game? I'm just, I'm just, you know, wondering. Clumsy secret agent, alcoholic ex marshal, and a depressed protocol bot. 
<laughs> uh, let's see here. What? What is? I'm actually live streaming this review right now, so all my chuckles are from that. Uh, let's see here. Is there is there an age on this game? Let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. There's usually like a. Mm -hmm. No, nope, doesn't say anything like that. There's no, like, it's three to five players, but there's no age. There's no age on here for me. Let's see here. Alright, yeah, no, I don't find any, any age, uh, age restrictions or anything on here, so that might just be up to, to whoever, I guess. I mean, I don't know how I would explain a pleasure bot to a five-year-old, so maybe, <laughs> maybe, you know, not, not too young, just, just, just gonna throw that out there. Um, alright. Alright, so... Crew card, we went over those. Crew card has a single trait which always resolves character and encounter cards that match its icon. So that's why you have those different little icons that we saw on the bottom. So you have different little different little icons on the bottom. I do apologize, the camera is not totally focusing and it, it's just not not behaving um let's see here crew may be used once per job after that they are turned sideways to show they've been used up you may also use an unused crew member to resolve an event that doesn't match its trait however the crew member used this way is immediately shuffled back into the crew deck so you can use Make sure to tell the story of the crew member's heroic or not so heroic actions to keep that job afloat. So basically, you can use a crew card that doesn't have the matching icon, but you're basically sacrificing that crew, that crew member. So you know, that's where you come up with, you know, oh, you know, kind of like, you know, how everybody thought, you know, Jane on Firefly did this awesome thing. When in reality, he just, you know, jack tried to jack all the money and didn't work and failed. But, <sighs> moving along. <laughs> uh, crew persists from job to job unless they are killed. Crew may only be placed on a ship at the start of or during... On a ship at the start of or during a job. Until then... Well, wouldn't that be at any time then? Until then, they are stored in your stash, where they may be bought, sold, traded between players, or lost when get. Wow, you can trade, sell, or gamble your crew. I don't think they would be very appreciative to that. But hey, you're the you're the captain, so you can do what you want. Passengers, a passenger is a character card added from your hand to your ship when you start or take your turn on a job. This is the only way a player on a job may use a character card. It can deal with encounter or character cards which match its icon. If it is used in this way, it is discarded. So passengers are discarded if you use them with the same icon, which is not what the crew card does. Uh, Alright. Cargo. Oh, let's. If an encounter of a character card played against you doesn't match a passenger's icon, the passenger is useless to resolve that card. When the job ends, if a passenger is on board your ship, it has arrived safely. This means the passenger is discarded in return for one extra payoff card from the current payoff deck. Episode 4, 5, or 6, which I really want to know why it starts at episode 4. This is your payment for safe transport. 
If a ship is destroyed, all passengers are discarded. Well, clearly, because that means everybody got dead. So, cargo. Cargo cards are added for free to your ship at the beginning of a job. If you have cargo slots available, uh, let's see here, yeah. For every cargo card carried to the end of a job, the player carrying the cargo gets an extra payoff card from the current payoff deck. So, your ca your characters... Well, how do they get... Hmm. Alright, this is going to be fun when playing. So, I'm going to go over a couple things after I do a playtest. Again, that playtest won't be until next week, until the end of next week. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get that up before uh, Galactic Scoundrels Kickstarter goes live on June 25th, which we'll take a look at that in just a second, just a little bit. Um, let's see here. If a ship is destroyed, any cargo is also destroyed. Well, clearly. Once per job, dumping cargo. Once per job, a player carrying cargo may dump all cargo on board to resolve a single encounter or character card. After doing this, the player may not add new cargo during the current job. Dumped cargo is placed on the bottom of the cargo deck. So you kind of sacrifice your goods to, to, to keep going. The player must also tell the tale of how the cargo dump resolved the card. So you can't just dump your, your cargo and say, okay, everything's good. Everything's set. you got to come up with, with a story. There are multiple types of cargo which are meant to add possibilities to the story of the job. So have fun including them in your tale. So let's take a look at cargo. You have telekinetic cargo. Cargo that screams a lot. Oh my god. I would get rid of that in a heartbeat. Radioactive cargo. Invisible cargo. Invisible cargo. How? How? Okay. Uh, dimensionally unstable cargo. Randomly teleporting cargo. Oh, I could come up with some good stories for that. Panic inducing cargo. That'd be good. Predatory cargo. Telepathic cargo. Deadly poisonous cargo. Time shifting cargo. Oh. The things I can do with that. Hallucinogenic cargo. Oh, oh, I know somebody's gonna have fun with that when I do this playtest. Chemically volatile cargo. Gravity altering cargo. Pheromone emitting cargo. Explosive cargo. Biotoxic cargo, painfully noxious cargo. I love how generally it's the same little box for the cargo, but there's there's little little small details, you know. I I love that wall. Uh, gravity altering cargo is is thinner because you know gravity. But I really really like this genic one is a little little torqued, time shifting. Is that that's hilarious? See how like the front is missing here because it's behind it. So I love the little details, the little little art attention to details. I love that. Yeah, see unstable, so it's kind of split. This one's just poofed. Invisible, clearly. So yeah, those little details are really nice. I like those. I like that. Alright, let's get back to this. Payoffs. Some encounters or characters may be resolved using money. If they show the galactic currency icon, if the player on the job uses this method to resolve a card, the player who played the encounter character card takes a random payoff card from the players on the job stash. So basically you can bribe people. You can bribe your way out of it. Remember, the stash includes any ships or crew that the player is holding there. So the player picking a randomly uh, picking randomly may be able to figure out which of the stash cards are better based on their backs. That is as intended. If there's nothing in your stash, you cannot resolve an encounter or character cards with a payoff. So basically, you're gonna r randomly take cards, but obviously because of the different the different backs, you're gonna you know. Th that might get a little, a little, you know, a little, um, crazy when you're playing. The 
depending on who you're playing with and their personalities, they may want to take your ships because, you know, screw you, trying to screw you over. Uh, let's see here. Twists. Twist cards, which are in this deck. Yeah, so, friend on the inside, disguise, double cross, hidden. I am so excited to play this. I wish that. Oh. Character cards hanging, judge, jutted lover, mercenary, mimic, escaped convict, encounter, supernova, local pickup, malfunction, military patrol, military warship, hostile natives. So it's kind of like. It's kind of giving you. This game is kind of giving you. Uh, essentially, it is a big storytelling game. You're, it's turning the player into a storyteller. So. That's 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 awesome for somebody like me that I mean I haven't done it in a long time but I like to I like to write so it's it's kind of a, a good way to get back back in there you're playing you're playing a game that you like you're playing with friends and you're also exercising your mind telling a story Let's see here twist cards are played against the player on the job they behave differently from encountering character cards. They cannot be resolved using ship, crew, passenger, cargo traits, or money. They may only be resolved through negotiation between the player who played the twist card and the player on the job. So this is where, um, this is where you better be good, good at, at uh, at talking. So, see if I can get this focused a little bit. No. See here. Each twist may be played either to help or to harm, depending on the interest of the person who plays it. So you could, like I said, you can either help somebody or you can hurt them. I may or may not usually probably hurt to them. So just unless it's beneficial to me, I will take you out. Um, let's see here. This includes exchanging money or other stash items immediately and or agreeing to payment later. Players may promise anything they want as long as it doesn't violate a game rule and deals are only as good as the word of the person making them. Ooh. Ooh. So, you can make a deal with somebody, they believe you, and then you'll be like, eh, I lied. So, yeah. oh, this is going to be so much fun. So much fun. Uh when the two players are done negotiating, the player of the twist says out loud whether the twist helps or harms, and then rolls two d4s to determine the result as the follows. So help the player on the job. Take over the job in its current state. Oh, shit. So if you roll a two... Wait, hold on. So if it adds up, you roll two... So you only roll two. So let's say you roll... Alright. Seven. Give the player a random ship from the ship's deck. So you roll a seven, you have to give him a deck. Or a ship. So it's all depending on five. Add a payoff card to the job. So that's that's all dependent on what you roll on the die. If you harm the player, if you say I'm gonna screw you over, roll your dice. Eight. End the job immediately as a failure. Ah, uh, so you have your it tells you your different ones here. Is that on the cheat sheets? Is that on the little let's see here. Let's take a look at these. Yep, yep, it's right here. So that's what these are. It makes sense. See help harm and it tells you what each roll of the two, three, so two take over the job. Yeah, I'm not gonna read all these because I want you all to have some fun. I highly recommend right now uh, going to their website. Uh, so let's take a quick look at that. I thought I had that open. Alright, one sec. Alright, so if you go to playgalacticscoundrels.com, and I did cut off the top a little bit, um, just so you don't see all my messy 
bookmarks and whatnot, but it actually does cut off right there on the page itself, so I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, Kickstarter coming June 25th. A Space Western Mayhem for 3 to 5 players. Honestly, this this can become a favorite game. Seriously. Just reading uh, reading the rules and looking at the art and how this game is going to play. I'm really excited to play it. Um, I cannot wait. Um, let's see here. So here you have Home Muse Kickstarter Battle Factory. So if you go to PlayGalacticScoundrels.com, the Kickstarter launches in 8 days, 14 hours, 33 minutes, 12 seconds, 11 seconds, 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 8 seconds, you know, not going to do the whole thing. You can also sign up and get a reminder for the Kickstarter. Let's see here, we'll click on Kickstarter. And that just kind of takes to the reminder because obviously it's not live yet. So, how do you recommend you go ahead and take a look at the gallery? So we'll look at some of these close-up shots because my camera seems to be not cooperating. So I do see that they had black dye and white dye. I got all white, so that might be something that got changed uh, later. We'll just take a quick look here at all the art. Oh, here's little controls at the bottom. I mean, look at look at this. Look at the look at this art. I love it. I love this distressed. You know. Like somebody, somebody like me that that works um, with graphics and fonts and you know, like social media stuff and things like that. I love this. I love it a lot. Look at these. Look at the icons. Like, uh, I love it. All right, so. You will not, I don't think you would be disappointed at all with this game, I mean. Alright, so let's get back to this. Alright. Uh, okay, so taking over a job. So let's say you happen up to, to roll, take over the job. Twist sometimes there's only players taking over a job. It may even be the help another player gives you. If another player takes over a job in the middle, any passenger's cargo from that first player's ship are immediately discarded. Wow, passengers are discarded. Passengers to the discard pile of cargo to the bottom of its deck. If the new player has room, she may immediately add as many passengers from her hand, cargo, and crew from her stash as her ship allows, no matter how close the job is to finishing. Episodes of the game. Alright, this explains the episodes. The game is played in three episodes. Episode 4... All the payoff cards are drawn from episode 4 money pile and crew cost 1000 in episode 5. Episode 5 money is used and crew cost 2000. Episode 6, episode 6 money is used and crew cost 3000. The stakes increase from episode to episode, so jobs at the end are worth a great deal more than jobs at the beginning. If you are wondering why episodes are numbered this way, yes I am. Ask your geekiest friend. If you're lucky, you'll hear the tale of the ge the greatest like yeah okay so I thought it was maybe a reference a reference to to, to Star Wars so that was uh, that was correct so the order of around yeah we started looking at that already uh one in the job gambling let's get to gambling because I want to know how you gamble I love me some poker begin with the player to the left of the one who has the last job who was last on a job. Unless it's the start of the game, then begin with the player who everyone agrees is the most honest. Oh, what if you're not honest? I don't trust anybody I play I play a game with. Um, all right, that player. Uh, okay, the player bids says out loud a hand according to the rule. Honestly, I am so excited to play this. 
when I'm done with this video right now, I'm going to call some friends and see if I can't get somebody to play this tonight. Because I really want to. <laughs> Still do my playtest on, on, on next week. But I really want to play this. Um, the order of bidding from low to high is one pair, two pair, three of a kind, five unique. Oh, it's based not on the card, but the little icons on the card. So, uh, let's see here. Cards are upside down on here. Because I guess uh, this time if you're gambling, you're paying attention to the to the icons. So two pair is not two yellow cards, but you have to find two with the same icon. So that's how that goes on that. Um, let's see here. Beginner of the player, blah, blah, blah. The player bids says out loud a hand according to the rules below. This bid can be true or a bluff. So you basically tell them what your hand is, whether it's true or not. It depends on if they believe you or not. So you can you can lie. So basically you're bluffing out loud rather than in poker and you're just holding your cards and you know, not letting them look. Um, if you decide to bid, you must bid one of these hands, and your bid must be higher than the previous bidder. Play cl play proceeds clockwise around the table with each player bidding. If a player cannot or doesn't want to bid, he may declare, I fold, and leave the gambling completely with no penalty. If all players fold, and another payoff card on the j uh, add another payoff card to the job and restart the bidding. If all remaining players fold after a bid, the last player to bid wins the job. After any bid, instead of bidding, the next player may say, you're a liar, to the player who has just bid, even if one or more players have folded in between. This immediately ends all bidding for the current job. After any bid, instead of bidding, the next player must say, you're a liar, to the player. So how does it end? The player who was called a liar must show the bidding symbols in his hand to the player who called him a liar or he must admit to lying. If he has the hand he bid, he wins. If not, the player who called him a liar wins. <gasps> oh, this is going to be so much fun. After a called bluff, the losing player hands all the cards in his stash to the winner. The winner may look at the value of those cards and then take the card of her choice from the loser's hand. From the loser's... Yeah. Okay. Loser stash. After taking a card, she returns the other cards to the losing player. This is the only time in the game that a player must reveal his stash, but only to the player who won. If the loser has no stash, the winner takes two random cards from the loser's hand. Alright, at this point the winner may take the job, sell it to anyone else he wants. He, I thought, I thought everybody was a she, now I'm confused. Or even give it away. If no one else wants it, the winner must attempt it. Okay. After you settle the job, okay, so take a ship. So then you go, you know, you do your job. Uh, fleeing during a job, player must choose to flee and fail the job. So you can you can run away. Uh, each time you carry a counter card playing during a job, you take this distress call. You can ask for help, apparently, and do a distress call. And complete the job. Example, play during a job. Alright, so these are, it gives you examples, so if you're kind of having a hard time trying to visualize how this is going to go, the the rule book will give you examples that you can look at. So don't, don't put, don't, you know, stress out about not getting it, because the, the rule book is really laid out very well, honestly. I've, I've played many many a tabletop games when you're you're kind of basically looking at each other and like okay we don't understand this so we're just gonna kind of do house rules and so quick reference on the job trait card um the only card that you could so so this right here basically gives you gives you why am i holding it upside down quick reference card so kind of a, another cheat sheet on the job off the job so it tells you a trait cards on the job the only card that you can play from your hand to respond to other players' cards. I can resolve a character or a counter if my symbol matches. This is really nice. I really like this. Off the job, you can sell me if a player sends a, distri a distress signal. So it'll tell you what all these cards can use whether you're on a job or you're not the one on the job. 
This is, I would recommend may, may making copies of this, printing it out, and having it's three to five players, so I would have at least five. So I'm probably going to end up taking this to work and making me some copies uh, next week. Shh, don't, don't tell my work. I'm going to use the printer for personal stuff. Um, but yeah, so I really, really love this. This is, this is super. This right here, and this right here. Everybody should have one. Um, yeah, I would, I would include, I would, I would actually include these, like, as a card. Um, maybe that's something they can do in the future. I don't know, but this is, this is great. This is this is great. This is really good for new players. Once you you know play more often, you you won't need it. But for new players, this is this is great. So yeah, this is Galactic Scoundrels. And uh, again, a Kickstarter is June twenty fifth. Ah, background messy background. June twenty fifth. Three to five players. I am super excited. You can go to their website, see another video that they have here. I'm super excited for this. Um, and I hope, I hope to be able to to, to play test this as soon as possible. Actually, as I said, I'm gonna try and see if anybody wants to play tonight. Um, and if not, I have a play test set up on, uh, next week. So, yeah, that is Galactic Scoundrels for now. I will be doing another stream again, uh, showing off the cards again, um, and that time I'll have a little bit more knowledge because I would have played it. So, yeah, it's uh, I can't wait, honestly. Oh, Galactic Scoundrels. I highly recommend everybody check this out. And uh, that's going to be it for this video. And, um, yeah. Uh, their Twitter also. Uh, nope, not, nope. Oh. Let me scroll down. Oh, well, here is. Actually, let's take a look at this. It was designed by Little Rock Games with the help of these artists right here. Let's look at the team. Okay, yes, so it just takes you takes you back to that. Designer, 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 local artist, designer, lead designer. So these are the people that put this all together. Down here you have all your social media links. Facebook, their Instagram, Twitter, uh email, contact them, and a link to their board game to their page on on board game geeks which is a a tabletop uh tabletop like you know kind of like a tabletop wikipedia basically but yeah so galactic scoundrels everybody i uh, hope you enjoyed this video hope you uh check them out sign up for their newsletter that lets you know in case you forget that the uh, kickstarter goes live on i believe it's a monday let me see how am I looking at it? Yeah, Monday, June 25th. Uh, let's take a look at this, actually. Oh, so it says age 13 plus on here. 35 players. This is best at 3 players. Probably goes faster. Game playing time, 90 to 120 minutes. So it is, it's not a short game. It's not a short game. Which I'm okay with. Um, let's see here. Yep, so there is a an age thing here, 13 plus. I mean, I don't know how I would explain a pleasure bot to a 13-year-old either. I mean, I'm sure on 13 nowadays they, they kind of get it. But I personally wouldn't want to be the one explaining that. I'm just going to throw that out there. So, I mean, I mean, you know, like I, I, I'm doing a play test with some friends next week. Um, I do have a 15-year-old in the house, 15-year-old nephew, who I will probably have play this with me as well. So that's going to be a little weird, but, I mean, he's 15, he's online, he, he, he gets it, you know. So it's, I mean, honestly, it's just, if you want to play with, with, with your kids, with, with family, you're going to have to make that, 
make that uh, choice on, on your end, you know. But yeah, so Galactic Scoundrels. There we go. That's the game. I would recommend everybody sign up, buy it, support it. Remember, Kickstarter doesn't doesn't happen without without uh, the help of of those that back it. So, side artwork here. And I am Android Gal. I do streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Android Gal. And I do have a YouTube channel. This would be going up on YouTube. So if you're watching it live right now, you're watching it on Twitch, you can also find it uh, archived on YouTube. Alright, have a great night. Hope you all enjoyed this. And I will be uh, back again with some more reviews after I play test. See you next time.